Good morning, America. Good afternoon, Europe, Africa, and good evening, Asia and Australasia. It's me again, Napa Pong Pong Napang, ISRT Vice President for Asia and Australasia. I will be your host for today's special program. Every year, the International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologists celebrate World Radiography Day in memory of the discovery of X-ray uh, by Professor Professor Rengen on November the 8th. And today we will celebrate our World Radiography Day with the theme of the role of radiographers in a pandemic. We will have uh, speakers from all around the world to share their experience after the past two years that our profession has faced with this kind of situation. Before we start the program, I would like to invite ISRT uh, CEO, Mr. Dimitris Kasifarakis, to give an opening speech for this event. Please welcome Dimitris. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Napapong Pombagan. Thank you. Uh, uh, good morning or good afternoon to everybody. And uh, I wish uh, to all you, dear colleagues, happy Radiography Day. We are here one, uh, 126 years from the famous uh, villain Coronet Redgen uh, discovery of the X-rays. And uh, as a profession, we have seen in this one uh, century and a quarter of it, uh, many progresses in the imaging and therapy as well also uh, medicine and uh, humanity owns a lot uh, to this magnificent discovery of Professor, uh, Professor Redgen. Uh, the ISRRT, the International Society of Radiographers and Radiological Technologists, founded uh, 63 years now, celebrates this very day by honoring uh, radiographers and radiological technologists as who are serving with, uh, uh, with uh, patient and care our patients around the world. No matter in which modality you are working, no matter if you are in a very in front of a sophisticated console of a machine or you are in a simple establishment at a rural center somewhere in the planet, the aim is the same, to serve the patient at your best. And uh, during the pandemic, radiographers, they did and they are still doing their best serving patients as front care healthcare workers. Having said that, I again wish you all having a very happy radiography day. And I want to thank you, our host, uh, Dr. Napa Pompagan, and our um, facilitator in this, in this uh, event, our uh, Dr. Jutta Pompagan, who uh, helped us a lot to, to reach to you around the world. So thank you and happy radiography day. Thank you, Dimitri. It's from now the time for healthcare. our speakers from all around the world to share the experience of radiographer in their uh, country in, in response to the pandemic that we have been facing with for the past two years. The first speaker is um, Samar El Farah. She is the scientific chair of the uh, our member societies from the United Arab Emirates. Samar, it's now your time. Greetings. We're celebrating the ISRRT uh, 2021 World Radiography Day, and we'll be talking about the pandemic of last year. Uh, a quick uh, review on the population that we serve as radiographers. So we're serving uh, around about 10 million population. The, this is the population of um, the United Arab Emirates. A growing increase uh, is also expected. Uh, the uh, healthcare services are diverse. Uh, they're basically um, uh, government funded with, of course, uh, some private sector uh, into place. Um, 
Back in 2018, the UAE was ranked one of the top 10 most efficient healthcare systems in the world. Uh, we're proud to have around more than 100 hospitals, and those uh, are, you know, between government and private, and they're um, in all different um, um, emirates or states. Also, um, Dubai is well known uh, as a tourist, um, uh, a medical tourist destination, and so this also puts some uh, expectations in terms of uh, what radiographers are supposed to uh, be handling. Uh, radiographers in the United Arab Emirates cover radiography, fluoroscopy, ultrasound, mammography, uh, computer tomography, magnetic resonance imaging, interventional radiology, PACs, and of course, some end up in managerial uh, places. Um, the, the salaries uh, are amongst the, the high, if you were a tear uh, of pay. Uh, so this is the situation of radiographers in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we're also, uh, you know, having a major event that uh, is expected to affect the healthcare sector. It already started. I'm sure um, many of you are aware of the Expo 2020. So um, we're ex we're looking into 25 million visitors. Um, based on uh, statistical uh, projections of the previous expos around the globe. Um, and so we have a site uh, hospital and we are uh, fully also prepared in terms of radiographers capacity and human capital. Uh, now looking at the, uh, the COVID-19 stats, uh, as of mid-October of this year, uh, we have diagnosed um, around 738,000 uh, cases. New cases were 104. We're going down with that, thankfully. We have the total uh, death toll of 2,001, around 100. Uh, recoveries, 730,000 um, uh, approximately. And we still have a total active cases of uh, around 4,000. Um, you know, the graph here shows that there is there was a surge back in February, but we're declining, thankfully. So this is uh, where we stand right now. Uh, thankfully, I think, and this is, uh, you know, this is this could be attributed to the fact that there there is more than uh, 20 um, million uh, COVID-19 vaccines which were administered since the um, the emergence of. Uh, so as frontliners, uh, we had several measures that we had uh, to take. Uh, so radiographers, uh, at the beginning of the surge, uh, the radiographers have been divided into different teams. So we had, if you will, clusters or bubbles. Uh, some were assigned to deal with positive cases. Others were assigned to deal with suspected cases. And also others were dealing with uh, non-suspected normal patients. And this was, um, you know, uh, taken into consideration uh, factors like, um, you know, uh, existing medical conditions, um, uh, compromised uh, um, immunity uh, in some cases. I mean, we're not referring to severe ones, but uh, things like, for example, asthmatic uh, radiographers were uh, assigned to non-suspected normal patients. You know, so so this is how we we sort of tried to bubble uh, the work. Many radiographers were reassigned from their uh, major routine um, work. You know, uh, specialized radiographers like mammographers or MRI te technologists or ultrasound uh, technologists were, um, you know, reshuffled to support the increasing load in the general and the uh, mobile X-ray work. Uh, some radiographers had also to uh, be reshuffled across the um, uh, the clinical sites, you know, the hospitals and the clinics, uh, so they can so we can address the the surge um, uh, of the of the um, uh, demand on the um, uh, chest X-rays and CT um, uh, chests. Radiographers were also requested to, of course, stay longer hours, and I think this is a, a global thing that uh, had to take. Uh, place, but uh, 
it was stressful in terms of the of the increased workload uh, on many of those radiographers. Uh, we also looked into uh, um, you know expediting the new graduate um, uh, radiographers appointment. And so immediately those um, um, you know students or graduates, uh, freshly graduates, uh, were introduced to a short um, orientation uh, immediately to perform uh, mobile x-rays, especially in the field uh, hospitals that those came in handy. We also talked about building a volunteering capacity in, in, um, uh, the, in, our, in one of the publications that will be out shortly. Uh, on the social level, of course, radiographers, as any other um, um, uh, profession and frontliners back then and, and, and even now, uh, we're not gathering for any meetings, uh, eating, um, um, you know, together uh, group activities uh, were strictly forbidden. Now we're having some limited, uh, you know, access to such activities. Um, also, different pathways were assigned within the department for each radiographer to follow the path as per his patient status. So we kept, uh, if you will, track of uh, of the footprint, um, you know, to to make sure that we are trying to contain the situation. Uh, radiographers who contracted the coronavirus mostly recovered, uh, thankfully, but some had to endure severe symptoms. Now, the aftermath of COVID-19 basically goes um, based on the reflections of what we have experienced as frontliners. Radiology departments were relatively top on the uh, of the performance indicators in responding to the pandemic. I mean, um, we did well. Radiographer rota rotations on different modalities is the way forward to maximize the work. Um, Force capacity in catastrophes and pandemics, so we need to look into more liquidity skills, if you will. Um, automation of workflows and application of artificial intelligence are potentially crucial for the future radiology practice. Uh, we've seen a lot of research reported um, uh, successful application of artificial intelligence, uh, and you know, uh, during the the pandemic. Um, there's also a severe lack of trained or verified volunteers, and again, I'm referring back to the to the uh, paper that we have uh, produced uh, to to look into that and find a solution. Uh, we are good at what we do technically, but are we as good as we should be emotionally and psychology psychologically? This is again, I think this is this is something that we need to touch base on and. Uh, explore uh, because you know this this uh, this wasn't um, if you will conventional and so we really need to look into that issues to be addressed in relation to professional practice and recognition in in our place in our places also should be addressed did we recognize those uh, first liners enough and uh, for us yes they were recognized but globally. I haven't seen a lot of, of um, if you will, uh, specifically radiographers' um, uh, recognition. So, for example, we've seen doctors, we've seen nurses being recognized, but radiographers per se, I haven't. Uh, so the way forward uh, as um, the Radiographer Society of Emirates um, thinks is we need to focus on social, emotional well-being and mental health uh, uh, um, issues. We need to support this as part of our professional practice. Uh, training and verifying volunteering capacity is highly recommended. We're working on a project, uh, hopefully on, on alternative digital credentials and micro-credentials and digital badges. Uh, continuing education that is affordable and free sometimes should be a part of our mission, uh, you know, and, and this did help back then in the COVID-19 uh, um, era. We did have two separate events uh, that were totally free of charge uh, and getting prepared for the unknown. I think preemptiveness, if this is even a word, is key here. We need to be preemptive and plan for catastrophes and, and um, um, you know, things like pandemics.
I will conclude now by this last uh, you know, slide. Look at that. This is uh, salaryexplorer.com, and it talks about radiographers' salaries. You know, this is not a radiographer, it's a lab tech. And just, you know, just to add to, to, to my point, we need to have um, media exposure that is relevant to radiographers. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you, Samar, for your comprehensive talk and share about your experience during the COVID pandemic in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we will get back to you during the Q&A session. The next speaker, we are very happy to have our member society from Palestine. And the speaker from the Palestinian society is the vice president of the society, Mr. Mohammed Abdel Ghani. Uh, Mr. Abdel Ghani, is now your time. Uh, hi, this is Mohammed Abdel Ghani, representing the Palestinian Association of Medical Radiation Technologists, Bamar. Uh, gentlemen and colleagues, good evening. Uh, today I will share with you the reality and the situation of uh, medical imaging profession in Palestine during the pandemic. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to talk about my country, Palestine. In Arabic, it is Palestine. It is a geographic area in the uh, Western Asia, west uh, to Jordan, south to Lebanon, and north to uh, Egypt. Uh, the capital is Jerusalem. Uh, population, uh, it is estimated uh, in 2020 about uh, 6,300,000. Uh, they are living inside Palestine. And 5.7 million uh, refugees, they are uh, living in camps in the neighboring uh, countries due to the war 1948 and 1967. Uh, regarding the education in Palestine, we have uh, four Palestinian universities who are offering radiography bachelor's degree uh, in, uh, and ultrasound program uh, training and two of them offering a uh, master degree in radiography sciences and CT and MRI. The Palestinian university, uh, universities have uh, approximately graduated 1,250 radiographers, the vast majority uh, holding bachelor's degree. Uh, we have uh, 100 have master's degree and 17 have a doctorate degree. Here, the distribution uh, of uh, the uh, radiographers' uh, jobs in Palestine, we have two sectors, the government sector and the uh, private sector. In the uh, government sector, we have 665 radiographers working the, in the uh, government sector, and we have uh, 435 uh, uh, radiographers are working in the private sector. Uh, moreover, here the uh, medical imaging modalities uh, distribution in Palestine. Uh, we have uh, lithotripsy, CT scan, MRI, uh, nuclear medicine, uh, mammography, cath lab, fluoroscopy, plain X-ray, portable X-ray, and dental radiography. Uh, as for our society, which is the regula uh, regulated body of the radiographers in Palestine, uh, Bamart was established in 1997. Uh, we have uh, decrease uh, on the uh, unemployment rate. Uh, now it is 12% of all radiographers in Palestine in 2021. Uh, it was uh, 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 35 percent in the year 2020. This uh, decrease in the percentage of unemployment 
due to the uh, high demand of radiographers during the pandemic. Uh, when we talk about COVID-19, uh, let's, let's talk about the history uh, of the uh, pandemic in Palestine. Uh, uh, on the 7th of March 2020, uh, the, uh, the first infected patient uh, diagnosed with COVID-19 in Bethlehem City, uh, the homeland, the city of the uh, Jesus here in Palestine. The contamination happened by contact with tourists. The local authorities have reserved a hotel to isolate the infected uh, patients since they had stable health conditions. And there was uh, still no available isolation hospital to hospitalize them. Later on, the uh, Minister of Health have rounded a medical center to end isolation hospital in the same city. The second uh, diagnosed case uh, of infected uh, uh, COVID-19 was in uh, Turkaren city, it's my city, uh, at the same week, uh, really. The Palestinian Minister of Health had, has had evacuated the Red Crescent Hospital in the city from the patients and transferred them to a government uh, hospital. The Palestinian Red Crescent Hospital in Turkarim City is equipped to receive patients with COVID-19. Uh, uh, later periods, all Palestinian cities uh, were alarmed as infected cities, areas with COVID-19. At that time, we had have three central isolation hospitals, Turkarim, uh, Turmusaya, Ramallah, uh, uh, in, Hebrew, uh, in Hebron, and in Jericho. Uh, this is the summary of COVID-19 uh, uh, status in Palestine now. Uh, we have uh, total cases of about uh, 449,982 uh, infected cases, uh, and we have uh, death cases about 4,604 uh, deaths. Uh, this was uh, the first uh, case I uh, made an X-ray for him, uh, infected with COVID-19. He admitted uh, in Turkarim City in Dread Crescent Hospital. Uh, I am prepared myself to enter and make an X-ray to, uh, to the patient. Uh, this is also uh, the isolation area, uh, isolation zone. In the Red Crescent hospitals, all the rooms are full of patients. All of them are infected with COVID-19. Uh, we have uh, the, the main two uh, modalities we used uh, during the pandemic. The vast majority was uh, portable X-ray. The second uh, modality was CT scan. Uh, not all uh, cities, uh, not all hospitals have a CT scan during the pandemic, uh, but all hospitals have just, uh, uh, or the vast majority have a portable X-ray. Uh, some of the hospitals have CT, uh, not all of them. We have uh, many obstacles during the process of patient imaging with COVID-19. Uh, the first one was because of the need to use two types of protective uh, materials, protection against radiation and protection against infection. The, uh, this constitutes an additional way that high does movement uh, as the lead pipes are often not designed to uh, be worn under the protection of infection uh, uh, protection. So we will have to find slightly shorter sizes and new design to suit the current situation. And the second one, uh, one was uh, <coughs> the fog accumulated on the uh, face mask. Uh, it caused by steam from breathing, which hinders movement to a certain extent. Even a small amount of fogging will cause mild confusion of vision. Uh, the, the third one was the packaging of the mobile radiography device somewhat affects movement of the mobile X-ray machine and somewhat affects the clarity of the light used to determine the imaging area. Uh, we have also uh, a problem in, uh, the short, that, that comes from the shortage of radiologists uh, around the country 
as uh, many countries in the world, they, there was a shortage in uh, the radiologists. This makes the, the, diff the situation more difficult. We have uh, vent uh, internet connection or uh, 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 interconnection between the uh, hospital or inside the, the hospitals that, that are uh, newly cubed for the COVID-19. Uh, so there was no back system, there, there was no uh, uh, HIA system. This was a big uh, obstacle. Uh, we uh, we used uh, the first we used WhatsApp uh, and email to send the uh, chest X-ray or uh, X-ray exam uh, to the medical team to uh, to have a look. Uh, it is it was difficult to do that because uh, some of the resolution of the images uh, or the radiographs were were lost during to the compression of the uh, images. So uh, later on uh, we. We began to uh, set up a, a new uh, connection, uh, internet connection, uh, in the inside the hospitals. Uh, in the future, I think uh, we should invest more in the uh, manpower, invest more in the healthcare system, uh, invest more in the technology uh, to overcome. Uh, any crisis in the future. Uh, at the end, I would like to thank all of you, dear friends, and it would be great welcoming you to visit Palestine. Uh, you are all invited invited to attend the first International Palestinian Congress of Radiography in 2022. Thank you all. Thank you very much uh, for your comprehensive talk and telling us the story about the situation in Palestine, Mr. Abdul Ghani. We will get back to you soon, uh, right after the, the final speaker for the program today. And the next speaker, we are very happy to have um, Melissa Pagola from the American Society of Radiologic Technologists. She is the Executive Vice President of Governance and Public Policy. And Melissa will share with us the experience from the USA. Melissa, it's now your time. My name is Melissa Pergola, and I am the Executive Vice President of Governance and Public Policy for the American Society of Radiologic Technologists. I am thrilled to be here to present to this distinguished group of professionals on World Radiography Day. If you are not familiar with the ASRT, it is the largest medical imaging and radiation therapy association in the United States. We have over 157,000 members representing all medical imaging and radiation therapy disciplines and specialties. In the United States, we currently have more than 330,000 registered radiologic technologists. COVID-19 has affected every country on earth. In the United States, we continue to learn about the disease and follow disease control prevention measures outlined in the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention Policies and Procedures. As of mid-October, COVID-19 cases in the U.S. were declining. In reference to vaccinations, as of mid-October, over 66% of the pop population received at least one dose, and over 57% of the population was reported to be fully vaccinated. 726,000 people in the United States have died due to COVID-related complications. Like all organizations, ASRT has learned a lot during this difficult period. Early on in the pandemic, like many healthcare professions, we heard from radiologic technologists who had concerns about securing personal protective equipment. In addition, technologists alerted us about increased workloads and assuming alternative work assignments to assist in managing the COVID-19 caseloads. 
Alternatively, we heard from many technologists who were laid off or lost their jobs due to the cancellation of elective procedures. Understanding the gravity of the situation, the ASRT implemented a number of programs and initiatives to support the nation's radiologic technologists. For example, we pivoted immediately and developed the ASRT COVID-19 Resources webpage, a one-stop shop with information and resources about COVID-19 and how to prevent the, the spread of the disease. The resources page includes an infection control module worth continuing education credit, COVID-19 essentials courses worth CE credit, free, easy compliance modules and resources, hand-washing posters, and details about how to get involved with Project N95. Project N95 is a leading rapid response nonprofit organization created in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. It helps healthcare providers and frontline workers source PPE from vetted suppliers while driving transparency in the market through procurement best practices. Its mission is to get critical equipment into the hands of frontline workers as quickly as possible. We also included information about the Return to Care Coalition, a group of organizations, including the ASRT, that educate patients who may have delayed important screens, scans, vaccinations, and treatments as a result of coronavirus fears. The radiologic technology community appreciated our COVID-19 resources webpage as tens of thousands of technologists have visited since it launched in March of 2020. We quickly followed the resources page with the ASRT Foundation COVID-19 Emergency Relief Fund and awarded over $277,000 in grant support for 563 ASRT members to assist with personal expenses while facing hardships caused by the pandemic. In addition, we also had to address legislative and regulatory issues that affected technologists. We partnered with other radiologic technologist organizations to lobby legislators to ensure RTs were included in HERO, sometimes called hazard pay measures. Unfortunately, some states left out medical imaging and radiation therapy professionals in the definition of frontline healthcare workers. As such, ASRT and its affiliates banded together to lobby lawmakers to make sure that radiologic technologists were included in the legislation and received hero pay. We also contacted state lawmakers directly to ensure that radiologic technologists were first in line to receive COVID-19 vaccinations. ASRT continues to be a champion that RTs are recognized as essential workers, just as nurses or physicians. Like all nations, the United States is still learning about how to manage this new disease. As I mentioned earlier, the ASRT has developed several educational modules to help technologists limit the spread of the disease and stay protected during medical imaging and radiation therapy procedures. As we learn more, we predict we will develop more COVID-19 educational courses and resources for the nation's medical imaging and radiation therapy professionals. We continue to monitor the COVID-19 pandemic. The health and safety of our members is our number one priority. As such, ASRT encourages its members to take precautions to, the limit, the, to limit the spread of the disease. Speaking on behalf of the ASRT, our society's goal is to follow the recommendations by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to ensure the safety of our staff, our members, and our patients. In addition, we believe as that we learn more, we will need to provide our members and patients with additional tools and services. The world is full of uncertainties, but I will never doubt the character and determination of the world's radiographers and radiological technologists. I would like to personally thank you as I know you are committed to providing high quality and safe care to patients around the globe, even during this difficult time.
Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Melissa, for your uh, comprehensive uh, details of what the American Society of Radiology Technologists has done during the past year in response to the COVID pandemic. We will get back to you for the Q&A session. And for the next speaker, we are very happy to have our colleague from India, which is uh, Mr. Rajiv Krishnan. He is the National Program Coordinator, ICRT, and also the Indian Society of radiographers and technologists representative from India. And uh, Rajiv Krishnan will share us about the experience with COVID pandemic as the role of the radiographer in a pandemic from India. Rajiv Krishnan is now your time. Hi everyone, greetings from Indian Society of Radiographers and Technologists on the occasion of 126th anniversary of X-ray invention and uh, World Radiography Day 2021. Today, the topic of discussion is the role of the radiographer in a pandemic. Let me introduce myself. I am Rajiv Krishnan. I am basically a radiographer, personally working as head strategic business expansion, India and emerging markets, Aramis Imaging LLP, Technopark, Trivandrum, Kerala State. And uh, I am the national coordinator for Indian College of Radiology Technology, which is the academic division of Indian Society of Radiographers and Technologists. Once again, welcome to the topic, the role of the radiograph in a pandemic. When we discuss the role of a radiographer, a radiographer is a member of the social system and the society. So he has social roles involved. He has professional roles involved and he has roles as a healthcare professional. So let us analyze one by one. As I told you, radiographer is a member of the healthcare team and he is also a member of the society. His responsibilities as a general healthcare worker are too many. We can examine some Examples here, spreading awareness of the pandemic, teaching his society and family on preventive measures, how to care, not to spread it to anyone else, observing the society around him to have good practices in preventing it, and moreover, pursuing people to get vaccinated on time. These are all his responsibilities as a general healthcare worker. And as a member of the radiology team, he has some different duties involved. The main thing is observing preparedness in the radiology department against the pandemic and ensuring screening of entrants at the hospital lobby as well as the department gate, because these are the two entrants where the infected patients can come in and infect all in the department. So these are the two points where screening is needed. Now we are coming to the preventive or inspection process which is the most important things in a pandemic. Let us examine one by one. The most important things comes with your human resources in the department. 
You have to always ensure the rapid sharing of relevant data and updated communications. Because uh, during pandemic period, a lot of data will be coming in from various sources such as government, uh, other health organizations, uh, your colleagues, and from us also a lot of data is coming in or pouring in. So you have select the relevant data and avoid the unnecessary ones. And ensure the available data is accurate and contains useful information also. Otherwise, it will, it will create panic among you and among the public. Another thing you have to observe is confirm that the infection prevention and control knowledge practice are up to date in your department. Depending on the data and the information you are receiving, you have to update the prevention and knowledge practice in your department. According to that, you have to create a cohort plan. What's a cohort plan? A cohort plan is a system of learning depending on you are taking observation and in the end you are taking inferences. So depending on that references and inferences, you reach a point where how the disease is spreading and what all symptoms are, are prevailing, all such things you can reach. So depending on that, the hospital authorities and your department has to plan a cohort plan. And another most important thing is that you have to learn to manage human emotions during the adversity. Because even though we are healthcare professionals, the psychology of every human being is affected during such adverse periods where you can be infected, your, your family can be infected, and your colleagues can be infected, and it can create panic in you because of the psychological influence in you. So you have to learn to control your emotions and stay adamant. So these all things will keep your human resource intact with the proper cooperation and coordination in your department. Then another thing a radiology department or radiology sorry can create is that create hybrid working systems in your department. That means you can split the available workforce into various functional teams. For example, if you have 20 radiographers there, you can split into four and look after the duties each week. This will, this will avoid cross infections because if one person is infected, it won't grow into the 20 persons or it won't affect your work or the functioning of the department. So establish shift systems to avoid cross infections and they and split into functional teams. The most important thing is, even if you are doing this, you have to use PPE kits and make sure if enough PPE kits are available for the staff of your department. Another thing you can do is usage of packs and radiology systems to be maximized because it can it can reduce the influence of inference of our interactions between radiologists so that they can sit at home and record or they can sit at separate rooms and record and uh, do not come into the vicinity of infected patients. In that way you can minimize the infections in your department. And the most important thing you can do is reconfigure in the radiology department. You can split your department into various areas, contaminated areas, 
or rooms and semi contaminated areas. And you can create buffer zones in between the contaminated and semi contaminated areas. And you have to create clear areas also where non infected patients are imaged and non infected radiographies are run. So these are all precautions to avoid or reduce the severity of infections in your department. Then you can set up emergency management and infection control teams with the aid of hospital management. The coordination between the hospital management and planning of infection control and radiology departments is a must. And collection of the most up-to-date protection related information to educate and train staff in the department is also essential during the COVID time because in, in each phase of the COVID, the protocols can change. So every staff should be aware of what all protocols have been replaced and what all new protocols are coming. And the reallocation of staff according to the actual situation is also necessary because Beyond your control, more people can get infected and go and leave so that you have to adjust the duties among the available staff. And another thing is that you have to take continuous CTs of infected patients with COVID. So establishing CT procedures for patients in COVID with COVID-19 is an important aspect of any radiology department. And the establishment of an emergency management plan for the radiology department to ensure that the departments would run normally, considering all these aspects. Then there is the general in, in disinfection procedures, which will be conducted in all, 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 all hospital departments and including radiology departments. The surface disinfection is very much necessary. Another most important thing regarding radiology department is the equipment disinfection. After each COVID suspected case, you have to clean the and disinfect the equipment. And you, you also have to wipe the ground using disinfectant liquids. And you also, also you have to use air sprays to uh, air disinfections. You have to control the AC temperature whenever necessary. Also. So these are some general infections, general uh, disinfection procedures carried out in hospital as well as radiology departments. Then the most important preventive measure is using personal protective equipment, PP for each radiographer. It includes uh, several gears, including shoes or shoe covers, medical protective clothing, head caps are used, N95 masks are a must, and you have to use goggles and face shield when they occur. And also, you have to use clothes. So these all things constitute a PP kit. Now we come to the medical imaging roles of a radiographer. One of the main workhorse was mobile radiography during this COVID season, as you know because it's very much valuable in both situations as it reduces chances of cause infections and it is very useful in radiographing infected patients admitted in isolation wards or, or, or in ICUs. And uh, this machine has to be disinfected after going to each patient or each room. But it reduces the transportation of the patients and, uh, and also, it's very much helpful in uh, X-raying ICU-redundant patients. So this mobile radiography was 
very much useful during the COVID season. Another important investigation is protein chest X-rays and HRCTs. These are uh, important tools to assess the complications and detection of non-related escalations of COVID. Early chest X-rays can help identifying the infection in early stages. And in many countries, Screening was done along with the RT-PCR and test X-rays at homes or at small clinics for initial screening. Another important examination was the CHRCT lamp, which helps in the detection of severity or complications like pulmonary embolism in post COVID patients or in, with the severe COVID. So these were uh, the most important examination related to radiology departments during the COVID. And the conclusion is that the role of the radiographer in the pandemic was very versatile. They served as a responsible citizen of each country took care of everyone around them as a healthcare professional and given their service as a diagnostic person in defining complications of the pandemic. A large number of them got infected, many of them lost lives, and a number of them are still suffering from post-COVID complications. Let us salute those who lost their lives during this COVID season. And for the mankind, a new dawn has appeared in the horizon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rajiv Krishnan, for your contribution. Uh, about the experience from India. We will get back to you uh, during the Q&A session. And we have, we have the last speaker for today, and uh, he is Ephraim Tembo. He is the radiographer from Malawi. Um, Mr. Tembo will share with us his experience from his country. Now is your time. Hi everyone, it's really a real pleasure presenting today uh, the World Radiography Day as we are celebrating the discovery of the X-ray and it has played a very vital role in diagnostic uh, for up as well as management of COVID-19. Uh, the title this year is the law of the radiographers in pandemic. I'm Ephraim Tembo, a diagnostic and a therapeutic radiographer working at a major referral hospital in Malawi, Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital. Uh, the presentation outline, I'll give an overview of uh, Malawi, uh, current situation on COVID-19, uh, uh, overview of radiology in Malawi, lessons uh, from COVID-19, as well as the potential future uh, direction. Malawi is a landlocked country with a surface area of uh, 118,484 uh, kilometers, of which 94,276 kilometers is a land. Administrative is divided into four regions, uh, northern, central, uh, eastern, uh, and southern region. The economy is uh, predominantly agro-based, uh, agriculture, forest, uh, fishing, contributing to 28% of the uh, GDP. As of 2021, um, population of Malawi is over 18 million, uh, of which 84% of population live in uh, the rural area, as compared to 16% in the urban uh, centers. 
So in terms of health, high quality services are being offered in urban and the uh, low quality services in the uh, rural areas. So as a radiology for the same, radiology services are being offered in the uh, urban and there are no radiology services in the uh, rural area. Malawi reported, uh, registered the first uh, COVID case on 2nd April 2020. And Malawi was uh, uh, relatively being spared uh, from the uh, first wave. However, after being uh, spared from the first wave, Malawi was being hit hard uh, with the second wave, uh, third wave. And as you can see uh, from the Minister of Health dashboard, uh, on 11th January 2011, uh, we had 452 new cases. And by then the total death was uh, 235 and the new uh, death 10. And on the uh, 30 July 2020, we had uh, more cases, about six, uh, 668 new cases. And the total death by then it was uh, 1,614 and 26 new uh, cases. But as of October, uh, we have been experiencing reduce in uh, COVID uh, uh, cases. We had only uh, four new cases and two new uh, deaths. So as of 2020, uh, Malawi, we had only uh, 96 uh, radiography technicians, uh, nine radiation therapists, and 30 radiographers, one sonographer, and one radiologist working in a public uh, institution. And also 71 uh, radiology staff, that's from the uh, uh, mission uh, hospitals as well as the private uh, facility. So you can see that uh, there's a real shortage of the staff in Malawi. If you see one radio, uh, radiologist against the population of uh, over 18 million as of now, and overall as the country, who, as of now, radio, the total number of radiographers is not more than uh, 300. So as a nation, Malawi were being uh, taken by surprise with uh, COVID-19, especially in the second wave, as uh, we were being spared in the first wave, uh, radiographers being involved in setting up the isolation ward. And uh, like in our uh, uh, facility, we uh, have one mobile uh, X-ray, uh, the same uh, to be used in the isolation ward, as well as for uh, emergency in the ICU uh, and theater. So it's quite hard uh, having uh, one uh, mobile unit uh, in a major refer like, like Malawi. So as the pandemic unfolded, we experienced uh, an increase uh, in workload and uh, procedure time. Uh, despite uh, suspending uh, some of the routine examination, uh, but uh, exiting a COVID patient, it requires a radiographer to put on uh, uh, personnel protective equipment as well as to dis disinfect uh, 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 the equipment. So it's is taking time. So we experience really an increase in uh, workload. Radiology services are a crossroads uh, of heterogeneous uh, subject uh, within the hospital, especially like in our setup, we receive patients from the surgical, medical, ENT and eye department. Therefore, measures as be taken uh, to mitigate the risk of the staff uh, being uh, infect, infected uh, and other staff from other departments as well as the public and, and the patient. So what we were experiencing is the shortage of uh, personnel protective uh, equipment, lack of, uh, uh, lack of training in infection control uh, measures. 
as I've already stated, uh, limited resource like mobile uh, equipment. We have only one uh, mobile X-ray unit for the uh, uh, like when the COVID was at peak. We had uh, five isolation mode using only one mobile uh, X-ray, as well as any other emergency was not enough. And then uh, overall, the country have two CT function uh, uh, machine uh, in the government. Uh, had it been that we have more CT scan, we can dedicated one for COVID-19, but we only have two, which is not enough. And also mental illness, the well-being, uh, uh, we are psychologically affected uh, for the first time in the COVID world. You think about yourself, am I going to be infected? And you also think about yeah, your relative. So really we were psychologically and mental health uh, 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 illness during the pandemic when it, it was uh, uh, at a peak. Potential future direction way forward, uh, development and implementation of a uh, uh, training uh, program that are based on staff law on emergencies, uh, develop uh, protocols to uh, provide staff with training on emergencies, and also uh, provide staff with social and psychological support. And for the academic, uh, the student need to undergo the uh, disasters training so that they can be equipped uh, with skills and knowledge uh, because they can play a vital role in management of COVID-19. Mechanism and system must be put in place before the uh, next wave uh, to ensure that all radiology staff are prepared and ready. And we need also to have a clear uh, infection prevention con control uh, radiology policies. Uh, that will help uh, to, to guide us, especially uh, as, as a, a radiology department. In conclusion, there are significant challenges globally in delivering medical imaging services. As the fight uh, will continue on going part of COVID-19, uh, quality and safety of care become more important. There are dramatic implications associated with suboptimal radiology, radiology practices and services uh, delivery. Collaborative effort of all radiology staff, we can assure provision of high quality and safe medical imaging services to safeguard the health of the public, our fellow staff and patient. So this is the team uh, from a major refer or hospital, uh, Queen, Elizabeth, Queen Elizabeth Central Hospital. Thank you. Thank you so much for all the speakers. Uh, what have you contributed and telling us the story from your country are very valuable to our colleagues from across the world. Now we have uh, Donna Newman, our president is here. Donna, you want to have a word to the speakers and to all the radiographers and technologists all around the world. Well, before we begin our, our panel discussion, I just want to say happy World Radiography Day to all of our members around the world, whether it's morning, afternoon, or evening for you. And I want to tell you that as our members celebrate in their countries, the ISRT actually wants to honor you and your members. And we want to tell you that what you do every day matters. You play a vital role during this pandemic. And we thank you for what you do every day for our patients. I also want to take a moment to honor our members that lost their lives during this pandemic. Our thoughts and prayers are with their family and friends, and we also want to be sure to honor them today for giving their life as frontline healthcare workers. And I just want to note 
that it was so interesting to me to hear our member experts around the world discuss the role of the radiographer in their country during the pandemic. And I see that there is still work to be done. And I'm so pleased to have these member experts on this panel discussion because you are the heart of our profession and sharing best practices and knowledge around the world is key to having success during this pandemic. And so I was so pleased to hear your experts from all your countries. And I look forward to our discussion during the panel. I'll turn it back over to you, Napa. Thank you, Donna. And happy World Radiography Day to you too. <laughs> this is a special day to us. Actually, we have three speakers that join us for the live session today. And thank you so much again for joining us to this program. I got. Uh, I just wonder if uh, any one of us from home, uh, you have any questions to our speakers, uh, please do so on the chat box. It's going to be underneath the uh, platform, the Facebook Live, or it will be on the right-hand side, depending on the um, platform that you log on. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, just ask um, uh, Melissa from USA. It's quite interesting the way that uh, the SRT put forward all the resources to the radiographer. It's 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 very impressive, and you have done it on time. And it's a good example because when we look back to uh, the year two thousand nineteen, when the pandemic just started, we struggle a lot. Especially in in my country, we didn't really know what to do. And of course, at that time, we we, we team up together with our international colleagues and come up with the the standards like that. I would like you to to elaborate a little bit about what have you done in in the US for the technologies over there. Yes. Yes. So with the technologist in the U.S., we saw, uh, as in everywhere, it was quite a turbulent time. And the technologists were dealing with changes, um, changes in role. Uh, many uh, lost their jobs because elective procedures were canceled. Uh, many had to figure out how to do more. They had to learn to do things like screening patients and take on roles separate from what their traditional radiography role was. And we knew that we needed to make sure they had resources to protect themselves and protect their patients. And so that's why we very quickly created that resource page. And as I mentioned, that research resource page had education modules to help them uh, protect themselves, protect their patients, uh, hand washing posters. Uh, the other thing that it had, um, as I mentioned, was um, the opportunity to be able to submit an application for uh, grants because we knew many of them were struggling financially. One of the things I didn't mention, which I think is so important, as radiographers and radiologic technologists around the world uh, are, are working working to uh, help patients in a critical way, oftentimes they struggled. It's very difficult for us as radiographers. So we even had resources to help them personally through um, dealing with the stress of that. Uh, and, and we felt that that web page as a resource was probably the, the quickest and easiest way to get that out to radiologic technologists. Oh, thank you, Melissa. And I move the same question to India, Rajiv. Um, please unmute your microphone. I we also would like to to learn about your association, the Indian Society of Radiographers and Technologists. What have you done for uh, your members and also the radiographers in India? Uh, thank you, Punya. Uh, yeah. Indian Society of Radiographers and Technologists uh, is comparatively a new generation organization which started 10 years back. Uh, but in the last 10 years, uh, we could do a lot for the radiologic community of India. Uh, we have started from the southern end of India. As you know, you have come to Kerala, uh, which is the southernmost uh, state of Kerala. We started from Kerala and we grew up to all 28 states in India. And we have now handling around 30 academic clubs in the main cities of India, as well as uh, our state chapters. So it has been a, a, a thorough success for the last 10 years, and that's why we got uh, admitted into ISRRT, I think. Thank you. All right. And in, interesting uh, 
thing that we heard from our colleague from Malawi is that it's it's a big challenge, I believe, uh, Mr. Tembo. Um, would you elaborate a bit about the education and training in, in your country, what you lack of? And then when it's time for the COVID p- pandemic, look at the number of radiographers in your country. It's, it's, it's a huge challenge that you are facing with. I have no idea if I, I, we, we could handle the same situation back home. Would you elab- elaborate a little bit about the the activities that you have done in your hospital and also throughout your country in response to to this this pandemic, Mr. Timber, are you with us? Hello, I'm just joining now. I was experiencing a <laughs> All right. interruption. Yeah, so you can come again. Oh yeah, we listened to your talk. It's very impressive, and see how you struggle in your country. You have a very, very limited number of radiographers and also uh, radiologists. But for our profession as radiographers, during the pandemic, what have you done to 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 face with this struggle? And also, if anyone helping you uh, to to like dealing with different uh, problems that you have, especially the manpower, the protective equipment and things like that. Would you share with us, uh, elaborate more to us so that we, we see uh, a clear picture of what's really happening to your country? Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, as Malawi for already uh, expressed, it's a resource uh, limited uh, country. Uh, radiology started uh, way back uh, 1940s, but uh, we had uh, the first academic institution starting offering a uh, radiology program 1980. Yeah, so just offering a diploma. Uh, we have graduate with a degree, but it has been outside uh, Malawi. So in general, in total number of radiographers, we have few uh, radiographers across uh, Malawi because of uh, only one institution offering uh, uh, radiology uh, courses. So during the uh, pandemic, the challenge with uh, our country, uh, number one, is about the human resource because of having few uh, radiographers because in the, our setup, the health system is divided into four. The tertiary health uh, system, which is the central hospital, which offered radiology uh, services. So across the country during the pandemic, we shift, uh, were working in shift, but it was not enough because, the, uh, for example, during the second wave, uh, almost half of the staff, like at a major referral uh, hospital, were being hit by the COVID-19. So we were only remaining with the half. And the, the total number of the population, uh, the total number of the patients that we see uh, during the day uh, is more than uh, 200 at a major referral hospital. So that's problem number one. Number two is about a mobile uh, uh, equipment, X-ray equipment. Uh, like in our setup, we have only one mobile equipment. And when the pandemic was at a peak, we had uh, five isolation wards. Using <laughs> one mobile equipment, it was not enough because all these isolation wards are, uh, are very far from the main radiology department. Mm. So these are the challenges that we experience, Uh, human resource as well as equipment and lack of uh, personnel protective uh, equipment. The problem is that uh, it's only this time, uh, last time is when the Minister of Health uh, developed the national radiology policies. And uh, for so long we have been practicing radiology services without having uh, radiation monitoring services. It started in 2018. So in our setup, radiology is developing. In short, is what I can share about Marai status. All right, thank you. And what about vaccination? Have you got it on time? Yes, uh, we started receiving uh, the vaccine uh, uh, some earlier this year. And as of now, the total number of the people who have been uh, vaccinated, a full vaccination, uh, there are over 700 uh, southern. Eh? Uh, others, they have just received the first job. They are waiting for the second job. 
So we are not even uh, more than uh, 1 million yet, but uh, there is a political will. The government is processing uh, uh, by uh, the uh, vaccine so that more uh, people should get uh, the vaccine. All right, thank you. And Donna, you have any comments or anything? I do. I do. I actually want to, I, think, I find it very interesting because we're in the middle of a pandemic and we are having shortages among our health professionals because of the pandemic. A healthcare worker shortage anyways, as the WHO has said, 18 million healthcare worker shortage by 2030. And how do we counter this? How do we get enough people in our field to actually take care of our patients for the future of our field and still uh, work through the pandemic without lowering standards? I think that... Uh, these experts on our panel could give us some good ideas. And I think that uh, we have to look to the future and how we can do this without lowering our standards. So I would be very interested to hear um, from our countries around the world how they would see um, our profession moving um, with our standards to expand, to keep our standards the same. How do we counter the pandemic and still fill the gap in the healthcare worker shortage that's been uh, happening all over the world over the last year or so and projected to be worse in the next coming years. I'd be interested to hear from uh, what our panels say about that, Napa. Oh, yeah. Maybe we start with Melissa. <laughs> What's your opinion about this? Yes. So in the United States, we don't have a shortage, but we did have um, issues during the height of COVID uh, where obviously our students couldn't um, attend classes. They weren't allowed to go back into clinical. So we sort of had a hiatus where students weren't able to be trained because the hospital sites did not allow them to go in. Um, most of our programs in the United States are, are back up and running. Um, some of them may still have some hybrid online classes, um, but the clinical sites, for the most part, are, are back open. Um, I think it's it's a, a difficult question, Donna. Um, you know, it, it depends on the resources of the country and, and the, um, the extent of the... Uh, I guess of the um, the amount of technologists and training programs that are available, um, but from the United States perspective, I, I think we're very fortunate that we have the programs that we have, and we feel very fortunate and and, and very lucky um, to have the resources that we have. I'm I'm very interested to hear from the other panelists because we too want to learn from you because we know we can't expect to always have the resources that we have. So I'm very interested to hear from the other panelists as well. Thank you, Melissa. I think it's, a good, it's good to go back to India, Mr. Rajiv Krishnan, because your country is a very big country with one billion population. And what is the situation of the manpower and, and education training for radiographers over there? Uh, please unmute your microphone. Yeah, thank you for the question, Napa. Uh, yeah, it has been a very relevant question because uh, our country is the second biggest populous country in the world with uh, around uh, 1330 million people. That means uh, more than 1300 million people in the world. And uh, there is surely a shortage of uh, all healthcare professionals uh, there. At the same time, uh, in certain parts of the country, lot of uh, lot of uncertified courses are being running. That have we have been found out uh, just to compensate this uh, among among the healthcare professionals. But uh, now there's a new move from the government. The government has formed a new Allied Health Professionals Council in India, which is the largest one in the world with 53 practicing professions. So uh, radiographers also will be included into this council. And uh, the registration will be started very soon. And uh, I think after that one year, uh, we will be having a, a clear picture of how much registered radiographers will be there in the country. Then only we are able to say how much is the gap from the present situation and, uh, and uh, the required situation. So uh, we have been working on this for the uh, last uh, three to five years. Our 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 uh, ISRT, the, our uh, professional uh, organization is also working behind this thing. 
and uh, we are uh, doing lot of uh, continuing professional development programs across the country even for the uh, non qualified technologies who is practicing so uh, that was the, our contribution for the last several years and now it has been uh, going to be uh, authorized to one so that we will still continue to uh, work in the direction of uh, improving the standards of radiographers in our country mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much that's that's good to hear that we all of us working hard to promote the standard of our profession we already heard this from from malawi already and uh Yutupan, would you like to share something from thailand since you are here <laughs> All right, Yutupon, thank you. And I would like to add on top of that, Thailand, even we are upper middle, middle income country, we still lack of, of radiographers because uh, the population of 70 million, like Thailand, we only have 5,500 registered technologists. It's, 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 it's never enough because like we have the problem with the, uh, not with the standard of education and training, we are quite well established. But the, the thing is to produce the technologies, there are a lot of regulation like from the Ministry of Education. One teacher can only take care of eight students. You might you may think this is ridiculous. Like, like if you, you need, need to have, to have a, a, one, one batch, batch of radiography student, student of one hundred, how many teachers you need? That's that's the challenge. Even I have been serving as the the president of the radiography board for four years. We've been fighting and never success. So what we 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 have done was that we open up new school, open up new school, and now we own we can only produce about five hundred radiographers a year, and never enough. And data from from last year. Uh, in our Ministry of Health at uh, the hospital, there are a total of 196 hospitals without radiographer. And that's tough here. But for, for the service that uh, we have, it's, 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 it's quite standard, I believe. But the point is we do not have enough manpower at the moment. And during the, the pandemic, we got hit hard. Like when we, we, we got vaccination quite early, but the vaccination type that we got was in, inactivated virus uh, uh, type. And when the Delta variant came in, it did not protect us. And then we get infected. And when the technologists get infected, the, the department was closed down. Here come, now comes the problem. I got a phone call from the ministry all the time during past year to find a solution to we even have to train people in the hospital to do basic x-rays because we have no choice when radiographer really got into the quarantine after we get infected that's that's a story that we have now it would be interesting to hear from uh, Demetrius our CEO he's working on a subcommittee uh, with Cariel and they're kind of have done some research um around the world talking about figuring out about the shortage and very interesting results that they have. And possibly he could share just a snippet of that information just to know for our members around the world that we are actually working on this. We know there's been a shortage due to the pandemic, but there's actually a shortage of radiographers around the world. Um, Demetrius, maybe you would share uh, uh, two, three minutes of uh, some of the information you guys have found out as you research that for us. Yeah, actually, actually, uh, we have uh, we had submitted to the WHO a project uh, because WHO, as you may know, uh, is at the big concern that there will be healthcare staff shortages uh, up to the year 2030. They say they will uh, they will be a shortage of some millions of healthcare workers. 
Uh, interestingly enough, the well-developed, financially developed world, they don't want to enter to the healthcare sector uh, because people, uh, they might want to have better other jobs, well-paid and having, uh, having not workload during the weekends and public holidays and night shifts. And the uh, underdevelopment uh, world wants to have uh, jobs to the healthcare sector because they want to offer probably more to their society and they are able or they are willing to sacrifice their uh, personal time and uh, to, to help humanity. Uh, having, having said that and having this in our mind, we in the ISRT uh, have questioned ourselves what's happening in our, in our profession. Do we have to face shortages? Are the radiographers in future, or we have enough situation around the world? Uh, many societies have responded back to us, giving. Uh, an outline of the profession and an outline of the interests of uh, of students and uh, and radiographers, and um, we are under the final process of the of the data. And I, I I'm sure that in within next week we will be able to share all this uh, final information with you all and with the WHO. Uh, but what we discover is that uh, is that the well-developed world world uh, doesn't have enough radiographers, and the underdeveloped world wants to offer more healthcare staff to enter to this healthcare sector. Interestingly enough, I think it would be interesting to hear from our panelists, as it from the WHO's point of view. We are countering the pandemic with shortages of people getting sick from the pandemic, but still they're asking us what innovative ways can we counter this? We have different laws in our countries all around the world for education. Can distance learning be incorporated at all from well-developed courses to be used in underdeveloped courses? I'd be interested to hear from our panelists if they believe that there's a role there for some kind of education I know this Facebook Live has been successful, but um, to really get the workforce needed with such a technical field, how do we counter that and help all of our, our member countries around the world to meet the shortage that's happening, coinciding with the pandemic? You know, with the pandemic happening, we already are losing staff members that are getting it and not having enough staff. You can't provide healthcare services. So it, it would be interesting to hear uh, what our members, our panelists think about opportunities to share uh, resources of online, if there's a role for that in education or not. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Napa, you can, you can go through the list of them. To talk. <laughs> All right, let's start with Melissa then. <laughs> Yeah, Donna, I think you bring up a great point. You know, in this time, many programs had to put their uh, their traditional didactic education online. So particularly in the United States, where many programs were face-to-face, -face, the actual classroom portion has been created as something that can be delivered virtually. Um, so I, I think it's a great question. How can we partner understanding there will be language differences, there will be cultural differences? So how do we work together? to take some of at least the basics of the um, radiographer and um, radiological technologist education and possibly partner. Um, I, I'm a past educator uh, in the United States, and I'm sure there are programs that, that would love to work uh, with other countries around the world, maybe to try to create that type of virtual education. Um, that's great to hear. And, and the good news is the ISRT is looking for setting up the education wing of the society. And this will be a very great uh, 
resource that we we can reach out to you. <laughs> and I think we kind of run out of time for tonight. It's eight, it's like one and a half hour already. And uh, I think we have uh, Donna Newman uh, to to close down to close the program. Well, I just want to say Happy World Radiography Day one more time. And I really, truly want to thank our member experts. Without you, our society will not be successful. And the sharing of best practice and the sharing what's happening in your country is really a benefit to all our radiographers around the world. So thank you for taking time to join in and listen and learn from our member experts around the world. And thank you to our speakers for taking time to share what's happening in your country. You guys make a difference to our patients every day and the work you do matters. So thank you all for joining us for this uh, Facebook Live. And I look forward to uh, seeing you all on our next session. Thank you and have a great morning, afternoon or evening. All right. Thank you, Donna. And goodbye. See you next episode. Bye. Bye. Speakers stay on. Speakers stay on. Thank you.